YouTube, what's going on? Welcome back to Gal Racer 2004. Uh, we we're, we're we're here for breeding, and you're 38. Still feels like we have a long way to go, but we've made progress considering where we were in the beginning of this series. Uh, as you can see, it's a lot of gentle house, and it's a little bit of fairy singer, and only one pairing with the golden boy. Now you may ask why. Well, if you watched the last episode, and if you haven't, make sure you go back. And watch the last Galt Bracer 2004 episode, which is two and a half hours. A lot happened there, and you need to be caught up. So watch that episode if you're not caught up. Because we lost two Phillies, mainly because of feeling temper issues, right? So, obviously, I have decided to avoid that now by uh, focusing on breeding with our studs that don't have bad temper ratings. And out of our eight studs, five of them have a temper rating of D. So I actually want to skip that. I want to skip them completely for a year, okay? And what I've done now with breeding uh, is effectively ensure that none of our horses should have anywhere close to D temper. Now, granted, RNG is still possible in this game. They could still stick me with a horse with D, but at least I know for sure with our parents that we're breeding together, that should not be the case. So let's go from top to bottom. Like I said, Gentle House is going to be responsible for a lot of these. Why? Because Gentle House is a freaking, you know, machine. Uh, he has... S in all the important categories that I wanted, and um, not really a bad grade. I mean, his worst grade is D for toughness, and it's like that. I mean, I forget about that even being a um, a stat or an attribute in this game most of the time. But he has S for power, speed, stamina, and staying. He has double S for response and heart. He has A for feel. His worst grades are breaking at C, temper at D, or excuse me, breaking at C, toughness at D, and temper at B. So. We'll pair him up with Chasing Hearts, uh, Double S Heart. I don't think you can go wrong with that on any horse. Pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, next, we'll move on to Cleopatra. I decided to leave her and Galaxy Star on auto, and they wanted those two paired up with Fairy Singer, and it pretty much matched up. As you can see, Cleopatra, pretty darn good. You can tell the quality of our broodmares are getting better, right? We're not seeing a whole bunch of C's and D's and then E's in there like we used to. Now we're getting a lot of S's, some double S's. I still want more of those, so we still have a ways to go, obviously, in that regards, but much better. <laughs> Move on to Tigris of Stone. She's also partnered with Gentle House for the reasons I mentioned earlier. And you can see her stats as well. Not as good as Cleopatra, but still. In fact, she almost mimics Cleopatra. If you look at it, the right side hardly changes at all when I do this. Um, either way, Tigris of Stone will also be with Gentle House. Real happy. I wasn't going to use her this year, but I'm like, if we're going to do seven... Um, seven uh, potential combinations, we might as well do the eighth... I wasn't really looking forward to that in the last video because I'm like, I don't want more horses. But at the same time, um, I think Gentle House is going to give us a lot of real estate to work with. So even if we have maybe one to three horses that don't pan out, at least we can rely on the fact that we should get five really strong horses minimally from this group. So real happy I decided to partner up with Golden Boy um, because initially I was going to use Golden Boy a lot and... <clears throat> When it came down to it, I didn't actually have him paired up with anybody. Golden Boy, just for record, he has double S in power and stamina, which is fantastic. He has S for speed. A, pretty much in all the other important categories, response, staying, temper, breaking. And then he has B for feel, toughness, C for heart. So I figure uh, if we're going to use anybody, and for real happy, it would be Golden Boy. And look at what this little dude in the right-hand corner says about this breeding pair. Oh, this is a perfect match. I can't wait to see what kind of fool is... Shut up. Shut up. I don't care what you say. I do not care. Whether you say it's going to work, it's going to be perfect or not, I am still doing it. We are still doing it. Okay? I did get some suggestions for breeding. And, again, the only reason why we're not doing those is because... I, out of all the things to, like, completely overlook, I don't know how I overlooked most of the studs with D-Temper. And, granted, a lot of these broodmares have decent temper ratings okay in fact all of them are pretty much s a b and one c in there right most of them are a and s for temper that's fantastic we've still used half of these with some of our really good studs that had d temper and i ended up losing two fillies you know what i mean so like it's just a different way to go about breeding i am sure everybody's not going to agree with the decision that's perfectly fine trust in the process okay every time trust in the process especially this time around because again i who wants to work with the horse with the bad temper? I don't think any of us do, right? Butterfly Effect, she's also paired with Gentle House. You can see she's A's all on the left. She's still good on the right. 
I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. Free Fear, she's partnered with Gentle House as well. Double S for Speed and Staying. A for a lot of the other categories. Galaxy Star, she's with Fairy Singer that I mentioned earlier. And then last but not least, we have Black Ruby with Gentle House as well. And the good thing is, uh, with Black Ruby, Free Fear, we're going to get um, that all-around course preference for Turf or Dirt. And I don't think I've used horses like that with... I don't think I've bred those two broodmares with Gentle House. So his stats, with the ability to run on Turf or Dirt, hopefully at the same level, relatively, I think that's going to be really good for us. So this is what we're doing. Five combinations with Gentle House, two with Fairy Singer, and one with Golden Boy. I actually wasn't planning on using all the broodmares, but I'm like, you know what? Let's actually see how this goes uh, this year. Because again, I... I'm just going to show you guys, and we'll get into a race. Diamond Plan. D for Temper. I, I, yes, he has double S in the other categories. I understand. But what good is that if I can't even use the horse long term because the Temper proves too much of a problem in the race? Which, again, if you didn't watch the last episode, you need to go back and watch it. It proved to be a little bit of an issue for me. Maybe some of you that play this game could deal better with that. That's fine. You guys that have been watching me for years know I do not like horses with a bad temper that affects us. That affects us in the race. We've had horses with bad temper over time, and sometimes I don't even notice it because they're actually pretty easy to work with. Can't say that for every horse, right? So I would just prefer to avoid that. Joker's card, we just retired him just to see what his stats would be. D temper for that dude. Uh, D temper for Burning Wind. Wasn't really planning on, on using him. D for Stargazing. Uh, he's got two D's and a lot of C's, so that's not ideal long-term anyways. And Formal Opera, considering this is supposed to be Secretariat, like, he's, you know, I mean, he has a good leg type, of course. Great dirt horse, but Temper for D and um, Response. Or it's a D for Temper and Response. Yeah, just not ideal. So I'm not saying I won't use these guys ever again, but it needs to be with the right broodmares I think could help. And not saying our current brood mares can't help in a way that we need, but we've tried, again, half of them, and we still ended up getting fillies with really bad temper and feel ratings. So I would only feel comfortable using those guys going forward if we use brood mares with double S. Not even S. Uh, we tried Cleopatra, uh, Tigris of Stone. I don't think we lost horses from those parents, so I'll have to check. Black Ruby, like, they're S. It should balance out that D, but sometimes the horses in this game may just get the stat of one parent. It doesn't even combine the two. You know what I mean? And that's the risk I don't want to take. I would rather at least ensure our temper at minimum is going to be at a B rank, which means it should not be a problem for us really ever. As opposed to taking a risk with some of the really good studs, I know I will be called crazy for it, but then sometimes our, our foals end up with the exact bad stat of one parent whether it's the father or the mother in this case it'd be the father and it would be deranged not feeling it man let's switch gears uh, let's look who's getting our two-year-olds this year so shiba or excuse me nazawa starting off with him he's gonna have rapid blade this two-year-old filly she comes from long live bolero out of butterfly effect i am super duper excited because i'm hoping she is the breakthrough horse in this pedigree that finally gets the bolero bloodline back on track because it's been Four generations now, since we since the Great Bolero raced, in game it's been well over 20 years, and we haven't had anybody in his pedigree be as great as him. You know, Butterfly Effect, I mean, sure, I guess she technically counts. And a, no, she doesn't even count. Butterfly Effect actually doesn't count at all. Not now. Now, Rapid Blade, this filly here, she will count, but Butterfly Effect doesn't count, so ignore that. So yeah, looking at Great Bolero's bloodline from the top. You have Onyx Prince, you have Long Live Bolero. Neither of them did anything. So I'm really excited for her. Um, Sheba. Sheba's going to have only one horse this year. It's going to be classy and smart. Two-year-old filly. She comes from Golden Boy out of Free Fear. The first time we bred these two together, I think she should be pretty nice. You can see the pedigree from Golden Boy's side goes very deep back to Western Tiger and Aunt B. Lee's Gold is in there, so... I, classy and smart should be that classy smart fast and hall of fame bound uh unless she has some you know terrible attribute that i don't know about feel temper bad leg type that doesn't make sense you know with her with her stats something like that we're switching on to cook here she has two of our fillies she has first down dash and point black let's take a look at first down dash first here she is she's from golden boy out of black ruby she just went through golden boy's pedigree so again should be another great horse 
And Point Black, two-year-old filly from Diamond playing out of Toxic Blonde. First time we bred these two, and the only time we did. And we can see Toxic Blonde's pedigree. She has Blues Breeze and Lee's Gold. So there should be speed, and there should be a pretty gutsy horse in there because, again, Toxic Blonde, close race okay. That ability helped her uh, be as successful as she was, at least for her, her time on the track. So both of those should be great. Uh, Riviera, Riviera is going to have two of our foals. He's going to have Little Mai, our two-year-old filly. This is Kayla's horse from Formal Opera, Out of My Love, Moon Trapper. Moon Trapper's been three for three on every horse that's come from her that's hit the track. No reason to think this wouldn't be the case here with Little Mai, especially with uh, Formal Opera and her pedigree, Desert Diver, Ant B as well. And then Storm Owl, two-year-old Colt. Love his look. Love his look. Love, I, I'm so excited to have a horse like this. I feel like it's... I mean, he kind of... Great, uh, Great Bolero didn't have that mark going down, obviously, in the same way. But uh, as far as the um, whatever their coat would be considered in this game, uh, yeah, that's the same. I, I can't recall when's the last time we've had a horse that's looked like this in the game. I, I feel like it's been a, a long time. Anyways, this dude, Storm Owl, comes from Golden Boy out of Chasing Hearts. And he is a true third generation cult here. You see his pedigree, plenty to go from. Golden Boy and Chasing Hearts, both very willful. I think this guy's going to have a lot of heart. You see he has Western Tiger on his Pegasus. Arctic Crop in there as well. Plenty of good studs. Lee's Gold, Suave Buster, and B for the ladies. So excited for him. I, I, I hope this is the year where like none of these horses actually do bad and we can keep them all. Of course, Silver and Front get nobody. Pink hasn't gotten anybody because she hates me for no reason, even though our relationship is extremely close. Don't know what her deal is. And last but not least, East Side Band, our five-star filly out of this entire group of two-year-olds. Beautiful girl. She comes from Diamond Plan out of Tigris of Stone. And I see the pedigree there for Tigris of Stone. Four generations. She has Western Tiger, Arctic Crop, Lion Cowboy, Pink Gemstone, um... Yeah, I, I don't think we're going to have a bad horse. I know I say that in some years. Usually, that's the case unless, you know, it's something really just weird ends up happening. Um, we can't say that every year. There have been years I've said, eh, I'm not sure about this horse. I think as long as none of these current two-year-olds have any bad ratings, as I said earlier, like temper or feel, you know, the list goes on. As long as that's not the case, I'm hoping I can keep them all. That, that'd be great. I feel like it's been a long time since I've been able to keep... All of our horses that we got as two-year-olds. It just always seems like we'll end up losing one or two on along the way. Or two or two of them just don't even turn out to be as great as we uh, expected. I think everybody should be good. I'm not going to say, for the except, with the exception of Eastside Ban, I'm not going to say anybody is going to be a rock star yet. I think I've learned to tailor expectations in that regards. But I don't think we're going to have a bad horse in that group. I don't, I don't think anybody's going to give us a problem. So that, to me... Has me excited and optimistic about those two-year-olds hitting the track here in a couple of months. Moving on to my girl, Bay City. We're going to kick off today finally with a race. I said I didn't want to extend this like I did, and look, we're 13 minutes in, but breeding is happening today, and foals are about to be born probably after the next couple of races. So, I think it was necessary. Blues Breeze is in this field as well. Uh, Chili Fame. Scotch Express. Ugh. Anyways, our girl, Bay City, she is the favorite. Nine furlongs in this grade, too. I guess she kind of has the great Bolero look to an extent, even though she's not tied to him in any way. She's from He Stargazing out of Moon Trappa. You see her stats already. Not bad. 76 speed, 77 stamina, and 79 power. <laughs> that was kind of fun to do, actually. Power. Should I start doing that, or is that going to annoy the heck out of you guys? <laughs> I'm not going to lie if I knew... It was going to annoy some of you. I would just do it just to tease you a bit, and then I would stop. I would never continue to go on. But let's see how much power. <laughs> okay, I'm done. See, I, I annoy myself. I don't understand how people can do annoying things long term. Like, I annoy myself after, like, two or three times. I'm like, you know what? I don't even want to hear myself doing this anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there are people, we all have had to have known them or have friends or coworkers like that. It's just like they're so annoying and they have no idea of how annoying they are. Like, like they have no awareness, right? It's what I'm realizing as I'm getting older. I'm like the average human that you may come in contact with, 
doesn't really have that much awareness, man. Like, people aren't aware of, like, things about themselves, good or bad. I'm aware of my flaws. I'm aware of my weaknesses. I'm aware of my strengths, my quirks, my OCD, whatever, you know? <clears throat> I don't really have a choice in my line of work. But still, it's, it's very important, I think, just to be aware of yourself. Just so you don't annoy anybody. Because most of the time, if you are at least super... Or at least... I'm not even going to say super aware. If you're relatively self-aware, then, um... Yeah, you should know, obviously, kind of when you might be like, okay, maybe I'm talking too much. Maybe I'm doing this too much, right? All happens. I just think it's an important thing for us to, you know, just uh, still be keyed into us as humans as we evolve, ultimately. Am I thinking of another horse? I thought Bay City was a front runner. Has this been her leg type the whole time? Or was the game not telling me her leg type? Bay City's looking good, man. She's picking it up here. She is, at what, six years old? So, I mean, she's been very, very long developing, but I, she's finally coming into that form. Wins that easily by more than three lengths. I, I think our girl is close to the grade one level. In fact, I'm just going to start tossing her in them now because I feel like three and a half lengths winner over Scotch Express wasn't even close. Yeah, I, I think she's ready for grade ones, and let's see if we can finally get things going. Regardless, um, just really excited to see how she's developed. We got another grade two again. This is with Major River. And then we're going 12 furlongs on the dirt in Nagano. Knight Falcon is the favorite. Pretty fast horse. Really good dirt horse, actually. I'm excited we have dirt horses now. So, like, we can, <laughs> we're, you know, we're obviously getting into the dirt. We have been for about the last year and a half. And uh, hopefully getting more of our originals that can be dirt horses, like, I mean, it's been such a long time since we've had a legitimate dirt champion as an original. We've had originals win dirt grade ones, maybe get a dirt title, but it, it's been very underwhelming. Like we haven't had a a formal opera, you know, um, type of dirt dominance here, and um, for our originals. And I, yeah, I just would like to see that. I mean, I, I think we're, we definitely are well overdue. That's my fault, of course, but, you know, like I said, we're finally at the point now where we know most of our horses should not be bad. Like I said, the last two I lost, if I would have paid attention to the fact that their fathers had D-Temper, and you know what? May have to be really, really picky with how you breed them, and if not, obviously, don't use them. We probably could have avoided that, but it's a good thing. Everything happens for a reason. Now we know. And um, next year, like I said, I may try them out with some of the broodmares that have S temper, but you're still playing with fire there. I just, I hate that because, again, in this game, you can lose your horse. You can't get them back. Uh, Malls, if you're watching this, I don't know if you are, um, Miles, but we were talking in the last live stream about once we lose our horse, can we get them back? And I, you know, and I was telling you, like, no, in this game, once you lose your horse, man, you can't get it back. They make it seem like you can, but you never have the opportunity to ride on your horse again. They'll always have an AI jockey already in their slot, and you can't do anything about it. Like, the game is just stuck there. So, like, you know, I don't want to lose horses unnecessarily. It's one thing if a horse just doesn't pan out to be as great as we think. It's another thing if you lose them and then you never get the chance to see what they could have been. Now, that to me is more frustrating, you know? Granted, the horses we've lost, turns out the AI can't figure it out with them either, so maybe they were just kind of bad horses. But still, who likes losing their horses in this game? Nobody, right? Now, we're coming with a wide run here for Major River. But it's revolution time, baby. It's revolution time. Pa -pa 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 power. Re -re 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 revolution, Lucian. Don't worry. I'm done. I'm done. Seriously, I'm done. Good one for Major River. Um, I haven't really raced her that much since she takes forever to develop. That's a really dominant grade two win on the dirt. Yes, the field was catching us at the end, but her stamp like she's still developing. Like her stamina is not even close to where it's supposed to be yet. So that's a fantastic win. The horse that I make fun of in Gallup Racer 2003 may be a really, really fun. A future Hall of Famer horse, in fact, for sure, I think, in this game. It's just, it, it goes to show you the games are not the same. Perfect race eval. Just going to say something and just didn't have anything. So, there you go. Point being, um, the amount of times I make fun of that, that filly. Uh, is she four or five now? I don't even know. Filly or mare. Where, wherever she is in her age year. 
Um, she's really like in 2003. I don't get it. Like she really is not that great, even though like she's like I think still ranked to double S in that game. And you know, AI always put her as a favorite. We beat her all the time. Right? You guys have seen that. Clearly, it seems like maybe 2004 got it right. Maybe they realized that she wasn't as good as she should have been in 2003, and they actually buffed her a bit to be in that proper position here in 04. Maybe. Anyways, this is Australian Grand Grand Prix, Australian G1. I'm saying that because I'm literally watching Formula One at this very moment on my uh, on my phone because it's the Australian Grand Prix for like the one and a half percent of you that might be Formula One fans. So right now it's practice three. And um, that's why I said Grand Prix. Usually you don't say that in horse racing. <laughs> Anyways, my bomb. This is a new dude I got. Thanks to uh, Abigail's recommendation. She was like, we need some new boys. And I'm like, you know what, Abigail? You're right. I felt like I said your name weird there, didn't I? Abigail. Granted, I'm sure I'm not the only one that's probably done that. But Abigail, you were right. Like, once I realized five of our eight studs have D-temper... I decided I want to focus on really good temper. Makes things a lot easier. And not to mention when you look at my bomb here, 91 speed, 91 temper, 91 or 94 feel. Power's not that great. Okay, stamina 63, I can work with it. And everything else is mediocre. And the staying is 87 as well, which that's a given with uh, speed and staying always staying relatively close to one another within three or four points. No abilities, but I'm looking at speed and I'm looking at temper and feel. This is a guy that we can use as a stud that shouldn't give us any problematic falls as long as we obviously breed him with a tempered uh, broodmare as well, which, of course, that's all I'm going to be doing this uh, this point going forward. And he's okay on the turf. He's really a dirt horse. So I'm trying him out here in the turf. I'm not giving him much of a chance here today. I still think we're going to finish in the top five, maybe better. So, again, we can also add to our well-needed list of... Uh, more dirt horses as I was talking about a couple minutes ago so I'm excited to use this guy I think he's going to be fun to work with I've never raced with him he's a new horse to me and again we can get that D temper out of there it stinks because I want to use those other studs more but T temper I just I don't want to take the chance you guys have to I hope you understand I don't want to take the chance because it's such a pain in the you know what to deal with if you get a horse with D temper whether it's RNG or not right it's just, it, it makes things a lot more difficult. Maybe some people, that's your play style. Maybe you like working with horses with a temper. I totally get it. It's just not my play style. So I just, I don't want horses with a bad temper. Like, that's the great thing about Galb Racer. We can control these variables, right? We don't have to do a breeding if we don't want to. We don't have to use a stud or a broodmare for breeding if we don't want to. So I am exercising my right to not use... The bad boys who don't know how to behave themselves. That's really what the D-Temper is saying. It's saying they have all this testosterone and they can't behave themselves. Which, granted, I know is a pretty common thing amongst actual, really strong, you know, cult thoroughbreds, right? They're just, they have so much testosterone running through them. Rich Strike is that type of horse. But also, I think Rich Strike has mild out, or he has, um, he's chilled out a lot, right? Um... And I think it just, like, him being riled up at the Derby, that's, like, a big deal, you know? Like, you didn't really see that with him after that race. I hated, I hated that people tried to give him that type of rep. Like, oh, he's an uncontrollable horse. He, you know, like, dude, it's the Derby. This horse was at the back of the pack and passed 19 other horses. Like, horses also get adrenaline. Hello. You know, horses like to run, right? <laughs> Some don't, but others love to run. Adrenaline, passing all these horses... Obviously, kind of being the the leader of that herd, so to speak, that is going to send any horse kind of, you know, <laughs> for for more or less, it, it's going to get them really hyped up, is what I'm trying to say. So, I know it's a thing with the boys, but I can also ignore that and say this is a video game. We can only take this so realistic. We can only, obviously, take this so legitimate. I can control the whether or not I want my colts to have good or bad stamina as long as i'm doing breeding i can control that variable so i'm going to control it and you guys have seen me struggle without controlling it and it's not fun right <laughs> all right so yeah major river's only four that's what i'm saying like that was actually look at her stats she's still so she's still garbage she's still really really garbage and that was a pretty dominating decisive win as the fourth favorite on the dirt 
But you see, I've been doing much better than my projected odds with her anyways. Supposed to finish ninth, finish fifth. Supposed to finish fourth, finish second. Supposed to finish fourth, finish first. So, yeah, first win there for Major Rivers, actually. That's a pretty, uh, it's a big moment. They won her in the America JC. I'm completely fine with that. That's a fun race that I like to run anyways. Bay City, looking good, my girl. I cannot believe... We're into almost April of your three-year-old season, and the game has still not told me her breaking temper, heart toughness, or feel, and her max distance. And her, like, that's so much. Usually at this point, we know most of these, right? And I've raced her six times. I mean, granted, that's not, I guess it depends on how you look at it. That could be a lot. Forgot she won a grade one already as well. The fact that she's from Moon Trapper, just, it's just so bittersweet. We're on a winning streak with Bay City, actually. I just realized. Yeah, our girl's on fire right now. We are five for six <laughs> with Bay City. Uh, it's just it you know, because it's like a project horse for me, it just it it's even it's just it's special. It's special because of Moon Trapper, of course. I've talked about it. That's why it's so special to have any horse from her doing so well, because I just ah I I wish I could have a Moon Trapper at like a double S rating just to see how dominant she could have been, you know? Like, gosh. But I'm thankful that she has contributed now to her daughters that are obviously going to be that type of horse for her. So, you know, she really has paved the way. All right, we finished ninth with my bomb, so that wasn't fantastic. Why do they want you on the dirt so much? Like, no, you're, you're a, I mean, a turf. Why they want you on the turf? LA Derby. I just thought about it. When is, can he run in the Kentucky Derby? Triple crown, we're going for it. We're going to kick him off with the LA Derby, though. See how he does. Six to ten furlongs, perfect. So it's going to be a little bit of a test for him in the but Derby, but he's got 91 speed, 63 stamina. That's perfectly fine. He's at his peak. He's a horse that would be in the Derby. The distance would not be suitable at all, but I think his temper and his speed alone, under the right uh, ride that would make him dangerous, depending. It, it all the, so many variables, man. Like people act like wagering and like picking the the Kentucky Derby winner is so easy. It's not. There's so many things that could go wrong in a horse race at any given time or not go right for any one or two or however many horses. And you know your ticket's completely thrown off, or you just don't end up picking the winner if you're just going one horse. Now if you're picking several, okay, obviously you have a better chance. We did three races. Who am I forgetting a race with? Okay, my bomb. I got set up. Base. Okay, never mind. I, I quit everybody. Thought I was missing a race. My bad, my bad. Odd Trigger is still here. Don't watch him. But, um, yeah, like, it's so many things that can happen in a derby, you know? So when people are like, oh, this horse has no chance. It's like, you don't actually know that 100%. Is it an unlikely chance? Strongly unlikely, sure, but saying a horse has no chance if they've been entered into the Derby, I think is kind of ridiculous. We've had some crazy upsets in Kentucky Derby history, right? Like, you, you can't... To me, the Derby is the one race you can never say never with. Like, you know? I'm just like, I've been watching horse racing as long as most people, and it's like, they're still like, ah, this is a never thing. Like, what? No, if... There was twenty. If there's a twenty horse field in the Derby, I think every one of those twenty horses has a chance to win. It's just a matter of whether it's an eighty-three percent chance or a two percent chance. Every horse that gets there, I think, has earned their way to get there at some point. They're not just putting any jabronis of colts into the Kentucky Derby. That's not how it works, man. Those are some really, really strong dudes, regardless of how they finish in the race. They're all strong. With that being said, we're moving on to grade one Royal Cup here. Six furlong sprint for our girl, Little Vixen. She's on fire. She is fast, 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 fast. 90 speed, 98 braking. She's almost going to break the braking. I I was trying to be witty there. You you guys, you guys catch the drift, right? Uh, 71 feel. Temper's not great, but it's 45. She hasn't given us a problem, really. 86 response. She's quick to go. Gain still doesn't want to tell me her dirt rating, which is fine, because I guess she's really not a dirt horse. And, um, yeah, she is really, really fast. She is like her mother, but fast, 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 which is fantastic. I mean, not saying Pink Gemstone wasn't fast. Pink was fast enough. I think her speed topped out at, like, 87. She, I don't think she was quite a 90s. But her daughter now, with Diamond Plan in there, she's a true speedster, man. True speed demon, I think. 
She's so fast, man. I love it. She's so fast, man. Little Vixen. Little Vixen is a little terror on the track. See this girl run, and it's just like... Pfft. Seriously, I mean, I'm sure most of us, you know, obviously we've seen some really fast thoroughbred fillies in person. It's just, they just look like they're flying out there, man. I love watching, obviously, Colts and fillies run, but the, you guys know I talk about it. The fillies are my favorite to watch in person because that lighter weight they carry just seems like they're just that much quicker, especially coming out of the gates. They're running over a mile. I, I, seriously, it's a feeling that will never get old to me. Like that's That's my passion for horse racing, just seeing just magnificent, beautiful creatures be able to run at such a fast, supernatural speed, you know? We're talking about a four-legged beast that weighs around a thousand pounds or so, being able to run as fast as the speed you'd be driving, commuting to work or school or whatever. Like that is when you have to you have to think about that from a <clears throat> excuse me, a biology standpoint. That's that's insane, man. Revolution, she's running 10 8 fractions. Like what I say, <laughs> little Vix said she's so fast, man. Oh my goodness, she is such a riot. She is a joy. Look at this, blowing this field away. Granted, it's the Royal Cup. It's an easy domestic grade one. 10-5 in that fraction. Look at all the stamina. She can go. She could go for another furlong at this rate, man. That last one, she finishes an 11-9, but blows the field away. Am I making my point clear? Like, it's just, it's something about fast fillies, man. I just... I will always have admiration for it. There she is, your World Cup winner. Little Vixen. Told you she was fast. Told you she was a little terror. She blows that away by 12 lengths and she sets the record. I'm not crazy, okay? I know my horses. I know our I know our horses, our good ones. Like, <laughs> just doesn't get better than that, man. That, that, is, that is just a joy. Have an original that fast that can blow horses away. Yeah, <laughs> I I could talk about Phillies running for days. I, I really could, man. I really could. You know, they're all so competitive at the front too, and most uh, most of the times, unless you have one that's a really slow starter, but they get out the gate so quick, and then they're just they're gone. And it's like I've gone to races where I've heard like other people in the crowd are saying that, like just look at them go, man. It's just I love it. Love watching the girls run, man. They are they are truly something special. Truly something special. Like what a win. What a win. Perfect race. Little Vixen is on fire, man. Gosh. I don't remember the last time I mean, as as far as originals we've had that have been this quick, who's been that quick? Toxic Blonde, she had her moments, but Little Vixen, she's been fast like this from the start. There there wasn't like a, a gradual build up. Like she was fast in her first race, you know? Just, yeah, fast sprinters are a joy to watch, man. They really are. Just seeing a horse that can just absolutely floor it. Now, see, I'm talking about thoroughbreds. I'm not even talking about quarter horses that can, gosh, run 70 miles per hour. That is just like a quarter horse that can run as fast as a cheetah. Like the thing is a thousand pounds. Like, does anybody really, really think about how mad, like how mythical horses are, legitimately? Like that we're blessed to have a creature like that on our planet. These things. This is a virtual image of it, of course, but 1,000-pound creatures being able to run between 35 and 70 miles an hour. (laughs) That's just just crazy, man. It really is. Delta Dreams up in the Eagle Stakes, kicking off his UWS Dirt campaign. I think the guy is ready. He is a closer. 86 speed already, 71 heart. Toughness and grit. From Formal Opera out of Pink Gemstone, this is a strict, direct descendant of the late, great Secretariat. So, um, yeah, let's see if we can get him started off with his three-year-old season with a bang. Also forgot, he's a horse we could also put in the Derby. I wonder. I wonder if we should chase the Triple Crown with him instead. Hmm. I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll see how this race goes. Obviously, it's much shorter than the Triple Crown races, but still. Should get the win here. Black Ruby still has the record. That's our girl. Horse racing season for me. My track. Thistle down. So crazy. Some of you are like that close. <laughs> it's just like. I forgot um who. Maybe a couple months ago when I was live streaming. It's like yeah I was at Thistle down in Northfield Park. I'm like dude. That's like literally like down the street from me. 
So it'd be awesome to meet up with some with some of you guys at uh, maybe a race this year or so. Um, but yeah, this will down for me. My local track, they'll be starting like three or four weeks. Like, it felt like it's a weird feeling of of feeling like it was forever since last time I saw a race in person, and as well as like feeling like it was yesterday. You know, just excited to see them run again. Oh, oh, oh excuse me, excuse me. Are you kidding? Are you fruitcake? Now I'm gonna have to bump a horse out the way. This is. Sorry, gotta do it, gotta do it, had to do it, because that was my lane, you didn't, whoever that was, you didn't even, look at you, look at you all the way in last place, you freaking goober, you didn't even need to move in that lane, you were perfect, the horse did, <laughs> like, I hate having to win like that, but it's like, there was no reason for that horse, like, you get, you guys saw it, right? There, there, that was one of maybe two horses that moved. It was a straight... Oh, wow. They they did get me for the inquiry. Uh, dude, are we going to get a one-week ban? Oh, that's going to stink. That's really going to stink. No. Okay. Okay, we keep the win. I, that scares me all the time when I see that. Um. Yep. What a win for Delta Dream. <laughs> We were supposed to win that race. We were going to win that race by a bigger margin. If who 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 is the goofball? Yeah, Scott Spring. Yeah, you freaking <laughs> you freaking goober. Like, what are you doing? Stay in your lane. That was a straight race from out of the gate to the wire. Nobody really needed to move, man. That was more or less kind of like a quarter horse race. They usually stay in their lanes if they're just going straight out the chute and they're at the finish line at the end of the track. You know, that's usually how those races go. Watch Los Alamitos, quarter horse racing. That's pretty much how they go. Goofball Scott Spring decides they want to move over. You know, yeah, I bumped horses. So what? Thank goodness Delta Dream's a tough dude. Thank goodness we can do that, right? Because imagine if he wasn't tough, that we may not have been able to get away with that. Ah, oh, this game is ridiculous sometimes. It really is. Well, that's a great way, again, to kick off his GWS Dirt campaign. So we're looking at a potential champion. Depending on what happens with the Triple Crown, I, I'll i see how the races conflict. If we can run him in the Triple Crown, I would love to put him in the Derby. I um, think that would be perfect. But we'll move on. Here for the Heaven Stakes, Grade 1. 8.8 8. 8 furlongs here in Dubai. Valley King, he is the favorite. He is 6 years old. He's taken a long time to to develop, but he's finally there. Here's the stats. Yeah, breaking temper, hardness, uh, hardness. I was gonna say heart and toughness. So hardness. Might as well say it like that. Hardness. There's a new word for the HRG dictionary. I'm sure you guys are keeping track. Fifty nine. I mean, literally. I might as well call it hardness. It's the same rating. It's the same number. So the hardness for this guy is only at fifty nine. But look at everything else. Ninety one response. He's really quick to know when we need to get going. He's powerful. Uh, he's good with his feel. I can run him in a fast pace or a slower pace and he's completely cool with it and he's got speed and stamina that should be able to carry him now i wish he was a little bit faster but with these with those important stats with the response power feel and stamina being where they're at he can get away with 83 speed so we should win in fact that's the goal it's the plan and then uh continue to roll on with him It's just it's great when your late developing horses finally start to really kick in, right? That's what we're getting here. Valley King, King, Valley King, something like that. I plan on probably trying to get back to the intros, uh, not the intros, the highlights for some of our horses. It just the only downside to recording long videos is if I'm doing highlights for like a particular horse like this guy, it takes me forever because I'm having to go through like twenty or thirty videos. That are two hours long. <laughs> just to find races only with this guy. And there's like no easy way to do it. I just have to just kind of. I have um, my video editing software set on like a fast forward. But I still have to kind of watch. You know. So it's just. It, it's monotonous. Um, it's very redundant. And it can be long. But I've realized I probably just need to edit in parts. Like, usually when I do videos, like, I like to edit everything at the same time. I'm not the type to edit it one day and come back to it another. 
I just like to get stuff done when I'm editing. It's just once I'm in that that mindset, you know, I just like to stay in flow. Like editing can be fun, and sometimes it's a pain, and no content creator wants to do it, right? So, especially because I have multiple channels, you guys know. So, like I I always have to try to cut down my work time as much as possible when it comes to the editing. I can't be spending four or five hours a day editing videos across all channels. I just don't have that much time. So I have to mitigate that. And um, yeah, the highlights just take forever to do. So here we go, Valley King. Plenty of stamina. He doesn't have that much speed, but I'm hoping we can outlast these horses. There's the grit. Again, this is what benefits this horse with his current stats. He doesn't have the speed. He's not going to fly past anybody, but he's strong enough to stay to the end. He's going to keep driving, keep driving. This is getting close. There's stretch bursts. Like I said, the win. Made it close, but what I say? I'm like, we're fine. We got going at 2.5 furlongs. I know he has the staying power, literally. The staying is power. They're pretty much the same. He has that staying power to just keep driving towards the end. And you see he got stronger. The other horses, they're going to tire out, so... That is the great thing about this guy, the, 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 the Valley King. That's the great thing about him, man. Now I think about it. Have we, have we, we've lost like what, one or two races so far in this episode. I don't know what's going on, but I'm on a roll. I like it. You guys hopefully do too, because us winning more means more success. More success means obviously better potential breeding profiles, achievements, yada blase better horses to kind of become fans of i think it's a, an experience everybody can benefit from crazy hunter we're also giving her her gws shot she is here in the universal cup third favorite buying sedate ruler and beauty value great great these two again because look at their age sedate ruler is only five beauty value as always seems to be four and under in this game when when i'm racing him they're both still young Late growth type. So, <laughs> yeah, this is what we're going to have to run with. But you know what? You know me. I'm off for the challenge. And uh, if we're going to run against some of the best dirt horses in this game, why not be these two amongst the others in the mix? Clear Jewel. Not bad in her own right. Uh, Light Gamble. Same thing. Rough Monster. You know? So, it's going to be very, very tough. But for what it's worth, man, we, we have a chance to run against some really, really good dirt horses really see what our current dirt horses are made of crazy hunter she's at her peak this is a race i think we got to win man we got to get her gws campaign kicked off with a bang and why can't she beat beauty value and sedate ruler why can't she power's not great okay it's not as needed for the dirt as it is for the turf feel is okay like it's 56 is doable that's fine toughness is 52 i don't plan on bumping horses like i did with delta dream everything else is in the 70s and 80s Speed is almost at 90. Like, she is powerful enough to win this race as the third favorite. So, just going to make sure I run the perfect race with her. Now, Beauty Value is going to want to go for the lead. Fortunately for this girl, Crazy Hunter, she has preference of Proceeder or Front Runner. So, I'm probably just going to keep her tucked right behind Beauty Value. That's the goal. She has a good heart rating, so she shouldn't be discouraged from losing head-to-head -head -head if it comes to that. I don't want to set the pace too far. And if beauty value is going to run faster than what I would like to go, I would much rather save a little bit of ground with Crazy Hunter, surprise him in the stretch, and try to get her the win. We'll see how it goes. I'll, I'll improvise. We're off and running. It's a good start here in the Universal Cup. Big, big dirt race here. Good start here for the Crazy Hunter. She's going to go out a little bit faster than I would like her to, but she gets a good enough start. We can move to the inside. And where is beauty value? Where is beauty value? Usually beauty value likes to go to the front, even though he's a proceeder. So I'm a little bit curious that he's not doing that here today. But I'm not complaining. I mean, if he doesn't want to challenge, it's fine. In fact, this pace is really easy. 11-9, we're not running that hard. And uh, clear jewel and sedate ruler, they can do their thing. Sedate ruler is really a timing thing. Like, you just got to get going at the right time to beat him. If you don't, you make it very, very hard on yourself, as I've learned the hard way. Now, like I said, Crazy Hunter, she can run with these two. She can run with the best of them. Yeah, we've really slowed it down this last couple, but 
good pace. This is perfect. This is literally ideal conditions for Crazy Hunter to get the dub here today. So I'm just going to kind of move her a tad bit ahead. Not too much, though. Not too much. Just to make sure we get the right start. Okay, you're going to work her a little bit hard. Here we go. We want to make these other horses catch us. That's the goal. Make everybody else catch you. Now, hopefully I didn't get her going too fast. I think she'll just hold on. Beauty value is closing. Come on, crazy. You got it, my girl. You got it. You got it. You got it. Beauty value is closing. Crazy Hunter trying to hold on. It's going to be a photo finish at the end. Ah, oh, man. She did tell me. She's like, this is a little bit too fast, too quick. They're going to give that to Beauty. Wow. Ah, oh, man. Yep. I would say that's a little bit on me. A little bit on me because, uh, yeah, 2.5. I got nervous about getting kind of caught by Beauty or, or Sedate Ruler before our spurt started. So I wanted to get her going. But, look, I mean... He sets the record, and we were right there with him at the line. So they ruler, like I said, is easy to beat if you get the jump. Uh, Frank is not happy <laughs> at all. <laughs> He's not happy at all. You know, we, we finish in a photo finish nose in a grade one dirt race, and, and imagine the trainer is, is, is irate. And maybe he's irate because of the fact that I held, that I got her going a tad bit too soon, which I, I can understand that. That was very clear. That was our win. She tired out at the end, and Beauty Value was on a really good run and caught us. And again, it's one of the best dirt horses that you can run against. So that, that that's not a surprise. But I'm so happy with that. That still puts her. That gives her good points. If I had both of our horses, her and Delta Dream, both Delta Dream should be first. We're tied with first, and um, she should be second. So either way, both of our horses in the GWS Dirt are running one and two in the position ranking. So we're perfectly fine. It's a great start to the year. Frugal Arc, another grade one. We're still in Dubai. 12 furlongs. The climax, as she is the favorite, as she should be. I don't care about anybody else in this race. Frugal's my girl. You know what we do with her. And we're just going to roll on. <clears throat> we just need to win with Frugal. That, that, that's all it is, man. I just need to win. Can't say there's one horse I feel so confident with that I can say we just need to just win this race and get it over with. I know I could still kind of lay an egg maybe with my other horses every blue moon, but Frugal's that one horse where it's like, unless I'm just not paying attention, I'm not losing with her, bro. Not losing with her. Hope you guys are enjoying the episode. It's been very successful, to say the least. I haven't, like, missed any of my goals at all today. And uh, like I said, we've been winning a lot. So we're off in the climax stakes here with Frugal Lark. She gets out to a good start. We're going to see what the rest of these uh, front runners do. And we'll go ahead and move her with them as well. And then she can run comfortably here. Oh, don't bump, don't bump, don't bump. Didn't really even need to do that with her, but we're fine. FP3 is over. Gosh, it is really wet in Australia. As of now, because uh, guys are all over the track, all over the road. But that track is really tricky to drive under wet conditions, like even in the Sims. You take uh, you take one one apex at the at just the the wrong time. You break a little too early, too late. Like you just yeah, you don't turn at the right moment. You, you end up in the gravel. It's pretty crazy. Most of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, so just ignore that. I'm just really kind of killing time because we're in a 12 furlong race and we still have six furlongs left to go. <laughs> We have a 7 for Frugal Lark, whoever that horse is. Deep Pageant's not having a good time. Now it looks like it's calmed down. That horse is supposed to be near the front. Okay. Frugal Lark is on cruise control here. She is running very easy, as we usually do with her. Wow, like six of six of these horses are front runners. I'm legitimately not a front runner. So it's always interesting to see how they compete up there. Um... I don't know. Is this horse? Are you gonna move out or or what? I, I you know what? I don't. I don't even want to do this with you. We're gonna move to the outside. Okay, there we go. A little bit of a later start, but I wanted to make sure we were clear. I didn't want to be in any gap or any lane where there was gonna be any interference. Oh, overwhipped. I think maybe. Come on, my girl. Let's go. Let's go. It's time to put in the work. Not happening. Close race, okay. Are we going to close in on the 13? No. Who was that? Wow. Psh. Yeah. 
They would happen like that, right? The one race I'm overconfident with Frugal. Grave Ransom humbles us. Now, I have the same result as I did with Franck. And Cook, who used to hate my gut, she's like, a beautiful ride. She was perfectly fine with it, and we were the favorite. We lost, technically. We did. I mean, obviously, not even technically. We lost. We were supposed to finish first. We didn't. I didn't expect Grave Ransom to be so tough in the stretch there. I, I'm like, okay, we can we can kind of push past this, right? Apparently not. Apparently Grave Ransom was still good enough to, to hold on to that distance, and Frugal Arc actually tired out. Still a good week. Three wins in the grade one, or three grade one wins in two places. I mean, that's not bad. And ironically, we won all the grade ones with our originals. <laughs> and not the in-game horses. So, I'm okay. Yeah, a little part of me is kind of like, dude, come on. Shouldn't have really dropped either of those other two. That should have been five for five, but it happens. It happens. Not going to be unrealistic. We're, we're, everything is fine because, again, Delta Dream is actually leading. Even though it's tied with beauty value, but you guys know. If, we, if this were to end today, we would actually get the, get the title and the trophy with Delta Dream. And the Crazy Hunter, she's there with Frugal Plan for third, quote-unquote second. So... But look at this field. This is this is a tough field of dirt horses, man. Beauty Value, Crazy Hunter, Frugal uh, Plan, Clear Asset, State Ruler. Rough. I mean, everybody on this page is in the top 10 are really good dirt horses. So, we have our work cut out for us, but I'm not concerned about that. And we're to most people's favorite time of this game. The little ones are going to be born. Not yet. <laughs> but we're going to be producing some. Here, uh, like I said, five of these with Gentle House, Chasing Hearts, Tigress of Stone, Butterfly Effect, Free Fear, and Black Ruby are all going to be with Gentle House. Cleopatra and Galaxy Star will be with Fairy Singer, and then only Real Happy and Golden Boy will have their own little thing. Let's see who's going to be successful. So Cleopatra and Tigress of Stone did not concede this year. Which, Tigress of Stone, we already have, I think, two from her, so that's not a big deal. But Cleopatra is a little bit disappointing because we just retired her. So, obviously, missing a year of breeding is not ideal. Since the broodmares, you know, you can't keep them forever, unfortunately. Um, everybody else worked, so we still ended up getting, uh, what, four from Gentle House. Uh, obviously, the one from Golden Boy, and then uh, only one from Fairy Singer. So that's a bummer, but, you know, like I said, the Tigress of Stone, we could have done without. The Cleopatra is disappointing, but the rest worked, and the game said they weren't going to work. Like, I didn't even show you guys. Most of the most of the Gentle House pairings I made, he said they weren't going to work. Um, the only one he was probably right with was Cleopatra. The rest of them worked, so, you know, it is what it is. That'll happen sometimes. We'll just have to uh, try her next year, and um, clearly her and Gentle House don't work, so I'll just have to keep that in mind, but... Um, maybe we'll have maybe I don't know if Solo Rider will be retired by next year. I really want to ride, ride, ride and run him as long as I can. Retiring him now wouldn't be bad. When I say now, I mean within the next year, like before next year's breeding season. If I retire him up to that point or at that point, it wouldn't be terrible. But he's still good. I'm still winning with him at a pretty decent rate. He's only five years old. Like. You know, 14 wins out of 16 lifetime starts with nine of those being grade ones. Until he starts to really struggle, there's really no reason for me to retire him. He's our best dude we got going on the track. So, you know. Uh, Frugal. That is my bad. Definitely should have won that, but we're fine. Um, Runner in the... Does she have the mid-champ title? I don't even remember. She does not. Yeah, she has... She still, she only has the, the the turf and the horse of the year. Like I thought, I got her like her regular titles by now, but uh, that's fine. Singapore Stakes, we're running that nice little tune up, bounce back, try to get the dub. Detail Vixen, they want her in the Spring Mile. I want her in the GWS Sprint. I don't really care what the game says. So Queen Mile, that's what she's doing because why not? Now, the power may be a little bit concerning, but I, I got to try to get her the GWS when she has a chance, bro. She's four years old. She has no titles yet. And um, she has a sustained growth type. I want to capitalize when she's this strong. She won't be this strong forever, so we got to make sure we take advantage of it. 
Uh, da, 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 crazy hunter. Should have won with you, but it's okay. Yeah, I've been kind of up and down with her, haven't I? Like, wins and then losing some grade ones. She's at her peak, too. Like, I wonder what's throwing... Is something throwing me off, or am I just... I'm getting her going a little bit too fast. Her stamina's only at 71. I think the yellow bar is, like, misguiding me. I'm thinking she has more than she does. Which, 71 is not bad, obviously, but... If she had 83, then I could be starting her as early as I do. I, I do kind of need to hold her a tad bit. So, um... You guys can hear the rain, I apologize for that. Hopefully you can't. But, um... I don't know. Like, what do I do with... Do I just hold her? Till the next grade one? Caesar's Cup? Uh, I guess so. Caesar's Cup for her in June. So she'll have a two-month layoff, but it's really the next best opportunity for her. Bay City will be in a grade two. Delta Dream. Get you back into GWS if I can, but I think those races are, like, done for a while. So until then, get you in the Triple Crown, my dude. Run you in the Kentucky Derby. See if you can go ahead and make history for us and be our first original, I think, to win the Kentucky Derby. I don't think I've had an original dirt horse be able to win the Derby. I don't think so. Correct me if I if we have. I can't remember anybody that's won the Derby as an original for us, but could be wrong. I think everybody's good to go. Um oh, Valley King, they want him in the spring mile. I'm actually, hmm, you know what, I, I'm, I'm okay with that, right? Because, I mean, is there anything else you can do in, like between now and then? A Fleet S? The, what is this power rating? Are you strong? Yeah, you're decent. You know what, I actually want to run him overseas. I, I need to see if he's capable of that. To know if I need to go the domestic route or we can do some international with him. Well, 76, yeah, he's strong enough to run internationally. What am I saying? He's doing good, though. He's got five grade one wins. Um, and he's finished in the top three, 21 of his 27 starts. So, and like I said, he's, I mean, we're on like a winning streak with this dude right now. <laughs> What's our winning streak with Valley King? We're on a one, two, three, wait, one, two, three. Six race winning streak with Valley King. And he's gotten his five grade one wins in this six race winning streak. So if this doesn't tell you this horse is... He's pretty much in his prime, and he's really rolling. I, I don't know what else will. So, um, yeah, it's looking good now, I think, for a lot of our horses. The ones that, are, that were late developing, they're starting to finally kick in. We're seeing progress. We haven't raced a lot of our three-year-olds yet in this episode. That's really where we'll see that particular progression. But as far as our horses that are at least four and up, everybody's pretty much in a groove and doing really well. So I'm excited and happy about that. All right. So we can keep the door. She's up in the Niagara Stakes. She is the favorite. We're running 10 furlongs on the TF. On the TF. See her stats. She's really just kind of... She's really like Joker's card, which I think they're full siblings or half siblings. They're pretty similar. So this is uh, pretty expected. Um, She's not that fast. She doesn't have great stamina. She's really just kind of there. She already peaked. So, um, I don't know how long I'll continue to run her. I think I was going to consider doing a grade two challenge with her, but at the same time for breeding long term, like, I'm not, a, like, these are her stats essentially at their best, more or less. That's not great for breeding, right? So I see a lot of D's and C's in there. So it's like, it's funny she's been from Diamond Planet to Chasing Hearts. Um, yeah, she didn't really get great stats overall. Like I said, just a couple of good ones, but not enough, I think, to really use her for breeding. So, once she's done, she'll probably be done. Um, I mean, I'll still race with her for the time being, because, you know, maybe I'll change my mind and decide, hey, maybe she can be our next Moon Trapper. I mean, Moon Trapper stats weren't terrible. She had a lot of A's. So, like Conquistador, obviously, she'll have some S's and A's, but not, I don't know if she'll have as much as Moon Trapper did, so... As of now, I'm just kind of considering just retiring her when we're done. Not using her for breeding, but we'll see. Like I said, maybe my mind will change. But I don't. she's not stronger 
statistically than any of the other broodmares back there, except for maybe Real Happy, she might be slightly better than her. That'd be the only other broodmare she could replace. Otherwise, everybody else is still stronger than her, technically, so it wouldn't make sense to put her back there anyways. And that's why I want to get to a point where, like, we can always replace our horses. I don't want to get to a point where, like, we get horses that, like, we can't even really use for breeding because they turned out to not be that great statistically. You know? So, it'd be nice to obviously be able to get to that point. Would be nice. Get her up. Don't want to be stuck in traffic here unnecessarily. She got two sevens. I don't want to bump this horse, but I am stuck here. I'm just going to have to wait. Move, move. Um, ah, ah, did not want to move that much. That's, that one is actually my fault. And, ah, gosh dang it. Didn't want to do that. Maybe she can really run these horses down, which would say she's still pretty darn good, I guess. But, oh, my goodness. I didn't even want to move like that. Nope. Over whip, too. Oh, man, that's that's one of those races I wish I could redo. I feel like I get one in every episode. <laughs> that is one of them. I didn't even need to move her. Gosh dang it. That was such a wasted opportunity, man. Uh, she tried her hardest, too. Like She was really trying to reel that horse in and just, yeah. Oh, man, that's that's on me. I, I have no excuses. Let's just let's just try to forget that one. Yeah, LA Derby nine furlongs on the dirt with my bomb, second favorite here. He's a dirt horse after all. He's okay with the turf, but he's really a dirt horse. My first time racing with him on the dirt. See how he does. Ah oh, man, I don't know why I did that. I think I like sometimes I move because I'm trying to anticipate the AI moving, and then sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. They usually do, but sometimes they don't. I'll think they're going to move at a certain point, and they just they don't actually make that move. So then I'm kind of like predicting, I'm, I'm getting the timing wrong, essentially. And um, then I'm get, getting myself blocked. That's a case where I get myself blocked. The other race with uh, Delta Dream, or no, Crazy Hunter. No, it was Delta Dream, yeah. The race with Delta Dream, where everybody was in their lane, and the horse just moved over to a lane it didn't need to move to. That's a different story of me getting blocked outside of my control. The last race, I, I pretty much created that, that scenario, you know? <laughs> that, to me, is different. If the AI are blocking you because they're moving in a way that just doesn't actually make sense for the moment, which is... Come on, this game is pretty glitchy when you think about it, so that's not uh, unrealistic to say. Yeah. Now, I'm not a huge fan of running five or six wide because nobody wants to challenge the leader, so... I'm going to go ahead and make that move. Unless they finally start to move in. Come on, let's go. Alright, let's 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 get over this nonsense. It's like wanting to run six wide there. For the duration of the race. For no real reason. In fact, I probably should have been with the leader anyways. But we're here now. Let's go. Run it away. Run it away. You got the speed, my guy. Got the speed. And here's the speed of my bomb. Pretty much as I expected him to be on the dirt, so that is a sign of good things to come. A little bit of a late closer. Not concerned about that. My bomb gets the win here and his first grade one. Let's go. It's a good bounce back for the L.A. Derby. Nine furlongs. Much needed redeemer. <laughs> there he is. Zah he is. Zah he blows. Zah he goes. All right. And now Frank is happy. <laughs> Seeing him go from being visibly disappointed to visibly happy is a pretty funny sight to me. All right, so a good point here. I'm gonna go ahead and get a quick save, and we'll keep rolling on. Back, I was looking at the info office. 
uh, classification records, let's go ahead and look and see exactly how good our horses are doing so far before it pops up in a couple of months. Here for the three-roll turf category, we have Bay City with a 120 and Delta Dream with a 117, respectively for the mile and the mid. Not bad for those two. Three-year-old Dirt, our boy Delta Dream is leading with 129 already. We haven't had a Dirt original be like that highly ranked so early in a long time, if ever. Uh, Valley King, 132 for the mile, or excuse me, for the mid. In the four-year-old and up category, Little Vixen, 131 for the sprint. Valley King is doing really, really good, really, really good. And he's getting better. And Little Vixen, she's been on fire. So these two, I think they deserve to be where they are. Trying to get them, obviously, above 135. And for the four-year-old turf, we have Crazy Hunter down there in fourth with 131. So, like I said, a lot of the, you know, uh, four-year-olds and then a couple of the three-year-olds are really doing good. Bay City, like I said, she is um, 120. A little bit higher than I expected her to be. So everybody's doing really well, honestly. I mean, we're not really struggling with anybody anymore. Granted, we still haven't raced with some of these horses in a bit of time, like Bolero's Gal, Red Wings, My Master, uh, Vivid Ice. I mean, a lot of these horses we haven't raced with yet. But the horses we are doing well with, that's really all that matters. Imagine 132 rated for the four-year-old turf category, and they still got my dude at an S. The game just hates some of my horses. It does. Like, this dude should be double S at this point. Like, how many? We've won five grade ones in a row. What else do we need to do? <laughs> Like, how is winning five great ones in a row not double S category? And he's 132. He's about to be 135. Do I really have to push that envelope? Do I have to, Do I really need to get him above 135 for the game and give him a double S rating? Because that doesn't always happen. Hardly happens, actually. Anyway, speaking of Red Wings, uh, she is up in the Cherry Cup. Not great odds. Figured I would give her a shot at it anyways. Yeah, I don't know what her deal is, bro. I don't know. She's B-ranked as of now. Don't know her speed. Her power isn't bad. Everything else is really not not what I wanted. She's from Silver Bullet, out of Oz and Autumn. Autumn. The other horse that came from Oz and Autumn was Cleopatra. Doesn't seem that uh, the half-sister shared as much of the same dominance or power. Cleopatra was an absolute beast. We all witnessed her greatness. She just retired. She wasn't successful with breeding this year, but we'll give her a shot next year again. Cleopatra was amazing. Red Wings, she's uh, yeah, she's qu- not quite like her half-sister. Well, not, not even close. Not currently. Not saying she can't get there, but Cleopatra was good from the jump as well. Technically speaking, Red Wings is like supposed to be close to her peak, and this is her at her peak? Well, I wouldn't really blame Awesome Autumn. Silver Bullet, he won only like a couple of grade ones really was underachieving on the dirt so yeah it's not a lot to work with you know what i mean but here we are now i've been doing better with her as of late i just you know i still don't know if she's a double s multiple time grade one winning type of horse so that's um that is something that i can't really um keep you know key in on so um, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how this kind of pans out for us and how it develops. But yeah, I just, it, it's too easy to really say with, um, with Red Wings. Clearly, like I said, her stats are showing that she's not going to be anything like her mother, but that isn't always a absolute guarantee of, oh, this is not going to work. You know what I mean? So let's we'll try to get her going, see how she does. Down the stretch, we come here with Red Wings in the Cherry Cup. Just trying to do well, man. I just want to see her fight today. She's got plenty of stamina left to go. I wonder how long she'll be able to hold that up, though. She's probably going to struggle coming up this hill. And that's where she starts to struggle. And it's still not bad, but she's going to finish, what, 6th? 7th uh, or 8th, maybe. 6th, actually. Okay, I was right. So that's actually not terrible. It's not terrible. And it is a massive rumble of thunder. The building is shaking. It's like one of those thunder rumbles that just like keeps going on and on and on and on. It's just... That's my imitation of thunder. Bad, yes, but you guys get the point. That's what it sounded like. 
Six, though, that's not bad. And, and this is also what I'm saying. Her stats are nothing like what Cleopatra, her half-sister's, is. But in her defense, she is... um. She is uh, doing better than what her odds say. Like, I'm pretty consistent with her. So, on that end, you know, it, it makes it interesting to see how she continues to either develop or what we can do with her. So, that's Red Wing. She's still B-ranked. 70 speed. Okay. Yeah, like, she's she's still growing. I mean, I, I suspect she'll technically be at her peak at 4. 7 furlongs is her minimum. Yeah, like, the rest of her stats are ash. Power will hit 70, so that's nice. I might be saving grace. Only 50 stamina, that's not going to get that much better. So, like I said, she's really below average, in my opinion. But, um... I mean, yeah, you see our recent races with her, with the exception of that grade 3. Uh, still finishing, you know, above where we should be. I just continually want her in these grade 1s. Like, 50, like what? No, 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 no. That, that is not her thing. Young Mile Cup? I kind of think I should save that for somebody else. Need to get more wins with her before I decide to put her in anything that's high stakes like that. It's not really a lot of good races for her, though. 10 for a long grade, too. Still seems like a stretch. Like, what's her max distance? 7? What if she's... Is she a 7 to 9? I feel like she might just be a sprinter. I don't think she has any real endurance on her. Um, do I run her one of these grade ones? Dublin thousand G. I mean, could save that for another Philly, but ah, let's just put her in the Paris. I think, unless there's another race before that. Oh, Britain. Never mind. For keep forgetting how many of those similar races there are through that time. So we'll put her in that. See how she does. I mean. I don't think she's grade one ready yet, but maybe she'll surprise us, you know? Maybe she'll surprise us. It's kind of wishful thinking, but that's all you can really do with a horse like that. <laughs> all right, let's race on. I forgot. We skipped breeding one of those years, didn't we? No, why would we, why would we have skipped breeding? Yeah, we didn't have any foals. I'll, I'll have to double check. Did we skip a year? A couple of years ago? I know we did in 2003, but like we have to. I can't... Re no, there's no way we skipped. Right? Um... Huh. Kinky lights up. 10 for long, grade 1 here. For the Azalea Cup. I mean, I the some parents were already auto set. Like I, like Fairy Singer was already auto set with Cleopatra and Galaxy Star well before March. So yeah, like I, you know, I'm just gonna double check. I don't know what happened. Did I mess something up somehow, some way? Did we actually skip a year of breeding? I can't imagine we would have done that unless it was the year I felt like we had too many horses. But no, oh, does it just that doesn't make sense. Wild start for Kinky Light here. I'm not really bothered by that. Yeah, I'll, I'll go double check. Like, I didn't. We didn't get an animation or anything, or did I just skip past it and I even pay attention? Like, <laughs> it's gonna drive me nuts. I want this race to be over. I just, I can't remember. I really can't. My brain is just like having major fog right now. Last hour's kind of been a bit of a blur. Not not in the sense of what I've talked about, just in regards to like things like that. Just like did like I know obviously I ran through the breeding and how the, all that went, but yeah, I'd, did we actually skip a year? I can't imagine that would have happened. Not in this game. But I'll double check. So we're at a pretty even pace here with uh, Kinky Light. Second favorite. Second favorite. Felt like I said that like I was going to say kinky favorite, and I said seeky favorite. Like, what? <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. Two sevens. That's good. I think there's a rough here. I'm going to move us off of it. Okay. 
Let's go. No Revo. Don't think we need it. Just pull away, my dude. Pull away. Let's go. Who was trying to run with us? Vivid Legend. Oh, of course. Are we really going to get just... We're going to get outran by Vivid Legend, naturally. But Vivid Legend is... I mean, he's a great horse, bro. So... I'm not going to lie. I thought that was really going to be our win. But apparently Vivid Legend is really that good. I should know. He's one of my favorite horses. It's just I don't usually run against him because I usually am racing with him. Or he's just not in the game. And that was almost even a perfect race. Wow. So not much I could have done there. I guess Vivid Legend is just still that much better than uh, Kinky Light. Again, I'm not surprised. It's the reason why that guy is one of my favorite horses in the Gallup Racer series. Seriously, you guys know I love Vivid Legend. Not a surprise. All right. Now, let's see what the heck happened with... Were there any little ones born? Did I skip it? Like, what happened? Um... Yeah, they... We, I, <laughs> Did I skip? Maybe I had to have skipped past the animation, right? I had to have. I had to have. That's the only thing that would have made sense. Anyways. The foals are here. Seven of them. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have Winged Lord. Of course, these are the in-game names. We will change them. Not going to do them now, though. Um, from He Stargazing, Out of Real Happy. Look at this pedigree. There's Vivid Legend, speaking of him. Vivid Legend is in this pedigree. Arctic Crop, Night Breeze, Western Tiger. Having Western Tiger and Vivid Legend as grandfathers, that's kind of a good deal. So this filly could potentially be really strong, or she could just kind of just be a question mark. I don't know. I don't know. But there's a good pedigree in there, so she could be strong enough. I mean, she's got Arctic Crop, Vivid Legend, and Western Tiger as the dudes. So, yeah. Excited for her. No idea what ability she'll have, but we'll see. We move on to another filly. Vivid Blaze from Formal Opera out of Toxic Blonde. Uh, we talked about them earlier, I think, in the episode. Speed. Lots of speed. Should be very, 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 very fast. Toxic Blonde, she almost peaked at 90. We know how fast Formal Opera was, so this girl should be really fast. Maybe 95 plus would be nice. We'll see. Could still be up in the air, though, because Toxic Blonde also didn't have other great stats so this you know sometimes they end up getting the worst stats of the parents but she should be fast nonetheless we move on another cult here actually i should say our first cult free mistral from gentle house out of chasing hearts see the pedigree here willful a little bit of guts and speed naturally so uh it's decent but like yeah she could be a question mark i don't know or he could be a question mark excuse me so we'll see how free mistral is we move on to another cult from Gentle House and out of Tigress of Stone, which is why I said I wasn't bummed about her particular breeding not working this year. And you see Tigress of Stone's pedigree. Western Tiger, Arctic Crop, Flying Cowboy, Pink Gemstone, Night Breeze, blah, 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 Gentle House, yeah. She sh this guy. Why do I always want to say the Phillies or the Colts? I'm so used to having Phillies in this game. This guy should be good. I, I have faith he should be good. I, I don't... I hope, like, Tigress wouldn't... Uh, potentially sway that. But I don't think she will. Not in a bad way. Another Gentle House. Colt here. Out of Butterfly Effect. Western Tiger and Irish Fleet. Now I think this particular guy is going to be really strong. Because every horse in this pedigree was really strong. So this could be um, a new potential super horse uh, line that we're working on. And uh, Gentle House and Butterfly Effect. That's a pairing I could do for a while. Butterfly Effect is only 10. So if this ends up being successful. In fact, I might try to do that, do that a couple more times. I, I should. I probably should. Just the quality we could get. That, that I think I need to do that uh, next year. Another Colt. In fact, the rest are Colts. Only two Phillies and five Colts. Finally. We, we just talked about it in the last episode, the live stream, right? Some of you that were there were like, we need more Colts. We get a pedigree. I mean, we get a group here with this pedigree of five Colts. We look at... This one, Golden Boy, and uh, or out of Golden, out of Free Fear from Golden Boy. Sleepy Picture is his name. Look at his pedigree: Honest Pegasus, Lee's Gold, Ant B, Western Tiger. Speed and Willful. This is great. Like this is what we need. We need a lot of potentially future 
a lot of um, future potential strong cults here. And the last one, Gentle House and Black Ruby for Simple Mustard. The name actually fits the way the horse looks. Sh- uh, should we keep it? You guys know how I feel about kind of silly names like that. But if the community said, let's make this a special occasion, I would, I would obviously abide and acknowledge that request. Should we keep this horse's name to Simple Mustard? If I see enough comments or enough likes, let's say... We gotta get this video at least for where we currently are. I hate setting setting likes goals, but we'll see. We'll see. Simple Mustard. Ugh. I just feel like the name fits the horse, but this horse can end up being a real... A real, um... A real strong dude, maybe? Black Ruby was really good. I enjoyed racing with her a lot. Would it be a little bit disrespectful to have such a great champion named Simple Mustard? Like, now I think about it, I don't even want that name for a horse. You know what? It's not happening. Nope. Veto. I vetoed. I thought about it. I'm like, that's really goofy. We're not doing that. Not for a good horse. Maybe for a horse that's like absolutely like, okay. Not doing that with a good horse. Doesn't even make sense. All right. And uh, this is what will be hap- This is what will be happening, or has happened, I should say. And uh, we'll have six on the way next year. So not as big of a group, but no big deal. Let's actually look at the one-year-olds. We only have five of them. So we have Lockwood. We named all these in the last episode. Lockwood is our one-year-old cult with a three-star future from Gentle House out of Real Happy. There's his pedigree right there. So three star future already. That, that's that's decent. We'll see how he continues to develop. Next but not least, another gentle house full out of chasing hearts. Three star future, four star power, angel hearts. I'm hoping she is quite the 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 terrifying monster for the rest of the field, or he is for the rest of the field. I should say. There I go, I'm getting Colts and Phillies confused. Maybe I should like look closer before you know, just saying anything. So uh, next uh, cult, Marksman from Fairy Singer out of Butterfly Effect. Three-star future. He's actually looking like the best developing one, even though there's a four-star Philly next to him. He looks the most consistent. Four-star power, three-star is everything else. Again, look at the pedigree. Not a weak horse, so he should be solid. Move on to our Philly Glam Queen from Gentle House out of Free Fear. She's developing quite nicely as well. In fact, if her flex was at three-star, she might be the strongest one in the group. She's already four-star future, four-star power. From Gentle House out of Free Fear. That's really wild, to be honest. Not surprising, but like, wow. Out of all the horses, this is pre- supposedly the strongest. Has the best potential future, which it makes sense. I understood you real happy. You know, she was there. Chasing Hearts, our first Hall of Fame original, but still. She wasn't nowhere near as good as Butterfly Effect. And Free Fear was quite dominant as well. And the last one, we have another filly from Moon Trapper called Moon Singer. I forgot... This this is our last one from Moon Trapper, and um, she's already three stars as well. So yeah, I, I'm excited for this whole group. I don't think any of them are going to be bad. I, I don't I don't get the headache alarm from them. I can sometimes look at a horse and tell if it might be a headache. I think they'll all be relatively calm, so no temper issues. Hopefully, is um I didn't use any of the studs with bad temper. I used Gentle House and Fairy Singer and. Those are two of the three boys that don't have a bad temper. So, yeah, that's good. <laughs> you know, that makes things a lot easier. So, let's roll on. Bay City. My girl, she's up again. She's the favorite in this grade, too. After this, I'm going to toss her on a grade one. It's just like this was kind of available. And uh, we get another grade two win with her. We'll set her up. Or another grade one. I forgot. She's already won a grade one. She won the uh, the Philly Cup. But start to now get her on that pass. And she's finally showing uh, her development as a four-year-old. Now, she's not even... I don't even think she's at her peak yet. That's the crazy thing. I think she still has another year or two of development. So she's actually moving along now faster than, than, than planned. So that's fantastic. Because most of these late developing horses I get, they don't end up like peaking until like five. Or at least starting to show some of their peak until they're five. I could technically run her as a closer as well, but I don't want to do that. 
So the fact that she's already showing her potential, really as the start of her four-year-old season, she's like a year ahead of, um, I think, her growth chart. So that's really good, actually. I'm not surprised, though. That's just how Moon Trapper Falls have developed. I always end up hitting their peak a lot sooner than what the game says, and they stay there a lot longer than the game thinks. I just think the game doesn't understand the greatness of Moon Trapper. And didn't understand her value. I knew her value. That's why I raced her in grade 2s until she was retired. Once I realized grade 1s were going to be too difficult to really win back-to-back, -back, I'm like, grade 2s and grade 3s. Consistent results. Top 3 finishes. Big races. Big grade 2s. Money prize pool. I thought about all of that. I had a plan the whole time. I had a plan the whole time. None of that was just by surprise. It was like, this is a plan and I'm going to stick to it. <laughs> All right, Bay City, run him away, run him away. Bay City is actually pretty quick once she gets that turn of foot. Holy crap, man. I mean, she's not running 10, you know, uh, 10 anything fractions. She came close with an 11-1 there. She's definitely grade one ready. Just wanted to make sure. Thank goodness, man. Thank goodness for Bay City. Blows that field away. Six kept up with this, whoever that was. Never a threat. That's what we like to see. All right, my girl, you ready for grade ones again? I'll make sure to do that. Easy win. Easy win. Continue to build the momentum. Switching gears to the second cup. Vivid eyes. Another moon trapper fall. <laughs> back to back with the moon trappers, huh? You know, I'm never going to complain about that. This is uh, Vivid Eyes, third favorite here. She's also not too bad. Her temper's not great, so I do have to be a little bit more mindful with her. But fortunately, she hasn't really given me given me an issue. So she's 74 for the top four categories, left to right at least. Well, speed, stamina, power, staying, however you want to say that in a box, a square, whatever. She gets out really well, and she has a good heart. Yeah, the temper and feel are not ideal, but as long as I get her into a comfortable position early on, she's not really going to complain. And with a good braking rating, that makes it a lot easier because she gets out faster and I don't have to fight. You see, a horse that has a bad, terrible, terrible temper with a bad braking rating, that is a nightmare. A horse with a bad temper rating like her, but at least a really good braking rating, that makes up for it. Because as long as we get a decent start, she can still get out like a rocket. So I'm very fortunate. If she had a bad braking rating as well, it'd be a nightmare. Western Tiger has the record here still. Pretty insane. I haven't raced with him in like, what, 20, 25 years in the game. <laughs> and we're off. And you see, it's actually pretty easy to get a good start with her anyway, so no real issues with this girl, Vivid Eyes. Just gotta make sure she's not leading. That's pretty easy to do as long as she's a proceeder which she is and she gets out well as always and we can just keep her comfortable here she's not really going to give me any issues unless i try to speed her up too much or slow her down too much just kind of have to keep her in a nice groove and nice rhythm and she's she'll be she'll be happy enough now i know you're going to try to overtake we're not going for that today i'm not going for it oh but you're still going to try it anyways nope not happening. Now, actually, if you want to overtake the leaders, that's perfectly fine with me. Oh, no, you just want to run right outside of them to make it three wide. Of course you do. Who are you? Who is that? Scott Spring. Hmm, interest. Oh, is that not that horse that blocked me in that one race? It totally is, isn't it? Did you even have a chance to win today? No, not again, 11th. What a joke. What a joke. You're not even a front runner, dude. What are you doing? <laughs> the same horse that ruined our race that other day. Not happening today. I will not allow it. No Rebo. We're just going to run away with vivid eyes and let's see how this works. Sly Chief. Keep that horse at bay. Horse is coming. Come on, my girl. Finish strong. We're right there. We're right there. I made that close. Probably could have held her a bit longer, but Vivid Eyes gets the win as she needed to. Let's go.
And you see, she didn't give me an issue, not once. This is what I... Remember what I was saying earlier in the episode? Sometimes we get horses with bad tempers, but they don't give me a problem. This is the prime example of that exact type of horse. A horse with a terrible temper rating, but because everything about her makes sense, then the game didn't give her any weird parameters that just don't add up or don't really meet on the compatibility chart for Gout Racer. She doesn't give me a problem. We're winning consistently, winning grade ones with her. That's the prime example of a horse with a bad temper. That's not really an issue. Almost a perfect race. You see my point? <laughs> you can sometimes get away with a horse with bad temper, but it's got to be the right horse. That does not work on every horse with a bad temper. You will have some horses where it's just it's just too much of a headache to deal with them. Or it's a constant roller coaster. Not the case there with Vivid Eyes. Thank goodness. We're moving on to another grade one. Ten and a half for a long race. He owns a Tef and Patty with September Sky. She's the second favorite behind Even Fan. I mean, it's a tough race. Even Fan, Dynamic Jewel, Grave Ransom, like Fast Courage. Not an easy race. I mean, really, everybody with the exception of Dynamite Wildcat, who got lost and just ended up in this race somehow. Um, everybody else actually has a decent chance. I think to maybe have a have a showing there at the end. Of course, I don't care about any of that. We're, we're going for the win for, with September Sky, but I'm respecting the fact that this is a tough field, and if I don't do this right, we could end up finding ourselves outside of the top two or top three. Shouldn't be the case though. September Sky has been really strong. She's another girl that's easy to work with. So as long as I do what I need to do, should be able to get the win. Should be able to. Should be able to, as the giant uh, jack, uh, jockey uh, diaper pants come into shot, because that's all it looks like. Just looks like a giant diaper. You know, our uniform tops look pretty good, but the pants just look like diapers. Just giant long diapers. I just. <laughs> oh my goodness. But, you know, it's the best they could do. Why do they whip like that out of the gate? I will not understand. All right, we got to set the pace, my girl. Let's go. Thank goodness for a front runner that can set her own pace, get out quickly, and not give you problems. Now, uh, who is that? Is that is that even fan? No, Dynamic Jewel. Dynamic Jewel, I'm gonna need you to like kind of park it back a little bit. You're a little bit too close. I don't want to be running this fast, but you know, 12-2, 12-1, that's not blistering. I prefer to be running like a 12-5, 12-4. There we go. Okay, now we can slow down. No seven. Whatever. Where's the even fan at? Oh, all the way back there. Jeez. Where are you at? Way back there. Which I really shouldn't even be worried about that horse right now. I need to be worried about Dynamic Jewel, who is still the third favorite uh, in stalking us in second off the pace. And then Grave Ransom is only a couple lengths behind there as well. Those are the horses I really need to uh, kind of look out for. I expect even fan to be up there at the end, but I'm saying as far as immediate threats, focus on horses closest to you. Don't worry about horses in last yet. Okay, we're going to make them work. We have stamina for days. We're going to make them work. What September Sky is really good at, she's really good at pulling away if, as long as she's comfortably out in front. She's like butterfly effect, right? They're actually pretty similar in that running style. And I said it about her. September Sky is going to walk away with this one, beating the field like they were nothing. And even Fan closing in, but actually further off the pace than I expected. It's also easy when you get a gate to wire trip with a front runner and you just hug the inside rail, but still, we pulled away. It wasn't like we had to really fight. <laughs> Saved her almost until 2.2, sent her on her way, and they weren't going to catch her. That's what September Sky does. Wow. She's, yeah, she's, she's really reminding me of Butterfly Effect in her own way. I didn't realize how st strong of a front runner she was in her own right. She's pretty, she's, yeah, she's in a similar field with Butterfly Effect, I think. What a great win. Ten and a half for her. I was supposed to be writing these down, and I have not. Jeez. I have been missing. Oh, I haven't been keeping up with my grade ones in my spreadsheet for a couple of races now. 
Oh, this thing is really outdated. I have like Jaden's champion in here. <laughs> oh my gosh, this thing is so outdated. Hold on, give me a second. Like ridiculously outdated. Like, oh my goodness. Yeah, I might as well not even keep track at this point, right? Whatever, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep track now. Uh, that was a good week. The re wins in a row. And two grade ones for our girls. Two all original wins. Vivid eyes. I forgot that was a GWS race. Totally forgot. So yeah, she's off to a great start in the GWS turf campaign. Delta Dream again, still tied. Crazy Hunters in third. And in the dirt, Delta, or excuse me, I said that twice, and the sprint hasn't started yet. So yeah, really good start to the GWS for us this year. Really good start. Um, September Sky. She does have a GWS, right? How many titles do you have? Just a GWS sprint. Okay, well, at least she's Hall of Fame bound. What's her record? Yeah, she's finished uh, in the top three, 19 number 21 times. Nine grade ones with 14 wins. Yeah, she's doing fantastic. I'm I'm guessing I'm close to probably several titles with her, so I'm just kind of going to keep doing what I'm doing. She's already got the GWS. I don't need to put her in the turf. I'll just try to title chase now. Can you run 12? You can. I'm curious, where have I been winning with her the most lately? 12 and a half, 10, 8, okay. More so between a mile and a little bit over that, so I'm not going to really make a habit of running her 12. Um, London Prince in June. Go ahead and put her in that. 10 furlongs. Get her towards a mid-champ title. Um... So I can keep the door. They, I oh know that was three. Sorry, I put you in my bad. Uh, who else? Base City and Vivid Eyes. Vivid Eyes, nine wins and fifteen starts. That's her fourth Grade One win there with the second cup. She's coming along quite nicely. I have no complaints. Why would I? Um. Yeah, since you're in the turf, gotta get you. Um. X challenge for you, which may not be for a while. Diamond Cup? Uh, impulse might be too much. Um, okay, I don't care. We need, like, we're in the we're in the turf. What do you mean? You're not going to discourage me by saying my horse is too good to run in a race that's going to help her win a championship at the end of the season. You're, you're not going to tell me I'm not putting her in that race. And they want Bay City up in the Golden Oaks. 12 furlongs. I, gosh, her stick... From he start well, this makes sense. He stargazing, speed, stamina, power, staying the top four stats that are all in the yellow. They're they're all S for him. So it's good to see that his daughter inherited his stats. You see, she could have totally inherited Moon Trapper's stats, which would not be what these are at the top. It'd be a drastic difference. So in this case, she inherited her father's really good stats with the heart rating as well. That's fantastic. Yeah, and then she gets the heart rating for Moon Trapper, that boost as well. So, yeah, Bay City, is, this is really ideal. And she's still growing. She'll be at her peak soon, though. I thought she was four years old. She's only three, but who cares? She's doing fantastic. One of the Golden Oaks. Um, yeah, definitely 12 furlongs. That might, that, yeah, she's an endurance horse in that regards. Delta Dream will be in the Kentucky Derby. Kinky Light. I do with you. Did I finish second? Yeah, and they sell you. I should have won that. <sighs> okay. We'll bounce back with you. Um, Young Mile Cup. I want to save that for somebody else. I'm going to put you in the Treasure Stakes. Ten and a half. So I think what I'm going to end up doing here is uh, these last couple of races. Delta Dream and the Kentucky Derby. Our Philly Red Wings and the Britain 1000 G. And that might actually be it. No, Solo Rider in the King Cup Spring. Yeah, we'll finish with these three races. So I would like to get another episode going for you guys. So uh, we've done well today. I mean, I've laid like two eggs as far as bad results or bad performances. The results weren't bad. The performance for me, I think, was under where I should have been goofing up. But outside of that, it's been a good day. Lots of winning. Making our horses 
profile is stronger for breeding. So that's always obviously a plus. Solo Rider, King Cup Spring, second favorite. They don't give this guy favoritism anymore. It doesn't really matter. Behind second death, still a good horse. Joby Freeze here, tender club. So Cuddly D, certainly not an easy field to run against. I mean, running 16 furlongs. This is really a stretch. Stamina's only 68, but um, he can run 14. So two furlongs longer. It's going to be tough. But they still give us second favoritism, so I'm just going to try to pace pace ourselves with him. And run him as close to a mid procedure as possible. Unless the pace is really slow and I can run him towards the front. I don't want him chasing the leader. We're not doing that. I would chase the leader with a horse that I know can handle the distance and the stamina without tiring out. This guy, Solar Rider, I think can handle the distance, but if I run him too hard for too long of a time, it will tire him out. He needs to pace himself. That's what makes him really good at this type of uh, event. Other horses, sure. You know, you can run them towards the front with the leader five lanes ahead of the field and actually be fine. Solo Rider, as strong and, and as good as he is, he still needs to pace himself in a 16 furlong race here. So, um, just going to keep him here because this should be okay. Yeah, well, not that far back, but. Yeah, just want him here. Forgot how responsive he is. I'm just trying to give him just like one or two taps, and it's just like going way too much. <laughs> now, this is not Proceeder. This is definitely mid. I didn't expect those horses to kind of, you know, get that blitz rush to the front there, but this is okay. I think this will be okay for us. What's most important is him being able to have a challenge at the end. It's no, he'll be no good if he's tired before we get to the end of the race. Well, this is okay. It's a full 14th horse field, so I still think I can run him 7th, and that still is okay. Really slowing down the pace up at the front. 12-7. This last two fractions, so... This is good. This is good. I mean, this is a, this is like a morning light, light, light jog. Like, you're not even trying to sweat. You're just trying to get your heart rate going. That's really the pace we have him at now. A nice little light jog. Don't want him going any faster than this, because nobody else is going faster than this. So It's a good thing about having a horse that is calm, that will listen to you and not give you issues. You can get them right where they need to be, and you just you settle in, man. You settle in and go for the ride. And ironically, he's a little bit upset that we're taking this a bit slow. My bro, you don't have 88 stamina, okay? We still have to be smart with you, okay? <laughs> you got 68 stam. That's bare, That's just above average, you know? We can't run like we have 88 or 83. I get it, I get it, I get it. Relax, we're fine. We got max stamina, which means we've paced ourselves well. We'll have the chance to run. Just be patient. <laughs> Goes to show. This guy is like two years past his prime, and he's still just as just as ready to go as ever. Let's see, we can get a nice little move here. I know you're going to try to block me. Not doing that. All right, let's go. He lost. You're fine. He does that all the time. If he loses a head to head, he gets discouraged for like a tenth of a second. Keep keep going. Keep fighting. I know my horse, man. I know my horse. This is like what I say. I'm like, he, we just need to pace ourselves with them. He doesn't have the stamina to just run at the front. I run him as a mid proceeder and he blows the field away by more than three lengths. I know my horse, man. And as usual, the game never giving us favoritism, but that's been the case since this guy was three years old. <laughs> and he's five now. King Cup Spring winner at 16 furlongs to Solo Rider. Guy's the truth. He is the truth. Five length winner. Yeah, man. First foal from Moon Trapper. It's just can't even make it up. The first foal from her ends up being one of the best original horses. Definitely the best original colt we've had so far. And he's going down the path of being one of our best originals in this game. I'll have to see how he at, how he matches up with the with the girls though. Galaxy Star, Cleopatra, even Butterfly Effect, you know. 
Definitely have to see how he matches up against them. Red Wings, though, up in the Britain Oaks, or the Britain 1000Gs, excuse me. Three-year-old Philly class here, and uh, we have no chance with Red Wings. Even though her odds actually aren't bad, but she's expected to finish 13th. It's actually a pretty close field. She's not fast enough. That's what she's missing. She's missing the speed. 70 speed is not going to get you there. <laughs> she needs, like, 79, 80. That would put her in the conversation. But 70 speed is not fast when you're racing against horses that have 80 speed. And up. So, good thing is I only have to beat one horse, so there's really no pressure. I just need to just kind of run a decent race with her and just try to catch some horses at the end. And yeah, hopefully that works. We'll see. I mean, if I run her as a mid proceeder, that could help us save some ground and then just try to really get her on a nice long run. She's not going to be the fastest. I'm really just going to be trying to beat out some other horses on just endurance attrition. You run it right, that can happen. Now, look, look at everybody staying in their gaps in these lanes. Not a single horse needs to move anywhere else. You don't. Everybody's in their lane straight from when we came out the gates. Nobody needs to move, but somebody's probably going to move. Nobody should be blocking us, fortunately. At least I hope not. Like, this 10 horse to the right of us should not have to overtake me and then move into my lane. You know? That should not happen. But this Gallup Racer and the AI are kind of wonky, so you never know, man. Never know, but Solo Rider still winning two years past his prime and grade ones against some tough horses. I am always going to love that. Two sevens, it's good. Well, let's see if Red Wings can go ahead and surprise the field here. Here we go. Revolution, no Rebo. Okay, let's see how she fights. She's got plenty of stamina left to go. She's doing really well here. So this is what I mean about Red Wings. I don't know if she's going to be like some grade one dominant champion, but she fights a lot harder than what her stats really represent in some categories. And especially what her odds are saying. I mean, she fights well every time. And look at her. There she goes. She's going to finish fourth at the line. Like I said, on paper, she doesn't look anything special, but she's really punching above her class and her weight. Her weight class a lot. That's a horse that's supposed to finish second to last. She finishes fourth in that grade one. And a couple of uh, improvements away from a perfect race. So, for what it's worth, man, Red Wing, she's doing well. I mean, she's not winning anything high profile, but she sure as heck is finishing well above her, her, her projections. So, that to me is a really good sign, at least. That uh, maybe we can continue to race her and try to find some magic with her down the line. But we'll see. Anyways, Kentucky Derby time. In fact, the last race of this video here, Delta Dream. We are the favorite. We got to win. I have no choice. Super weak, who are you? Empty Dialer, I know about you. Lively Act, you're barely around. Like, this is a race we need to win. Unfortunately, that actually gave us a relatively easy field. So, eight ruler, beauty value, none of the big dogs are here. So, Delta Dream, 88 speed, closer, 72 heart. Our race to win. Just um, find a comfortable stalking position. Make sure I get him into good space. Make sure we're not blocked. It's the only downside of having a closer. I do. You do have to navigate traffic and risk getting blocked. But um, we're like a dollar favorite over the next best horse. So this should be a pretty good win for us as long as I don't mess anything up. What was the record here? Major Song. Never worked with that horse, but oh, it's a good one. Delta Dream, establish yourself in the GWS. Well, I forgot, this is not a GWS, but we'll be getting there. This is a good tune-up for that, because still a pretty tough race to win if you don't have a good dirt horse. Depends on the field, though. Okay, my dude, you know the deal. I'm going to get all the way back to last. Now, whoever the 13 is, I hope that horse doesn't like spread this field out by, two, by like 20 lengths, but Empty Dialer looks like that's what it wants to do. Um, I don't know if I should hug... Well, I'm going to hug the rail for now. Save as much ground as possible. Just make sure we're in a good stalking rhythm. I don't want to be overusing or overexerting too much. 14 horse field as well, so I'm just... I'm trying to think of what we're going to do. I don't know if the rail is going to be open, and I don't want to get stuck down there, but I also don't want to be running 4 and 5 wide, so... Oh, what to do, what to do, what to do, what to do... Hmm. Actually, you know what? If they tuck in, this is three wide isn't bad. I, I just, I got an idea, my dude. Ah, I forgot toughness. 
I always forget I can kind of bump horses and he doesn't care. So I don't. I, I swear I act so delicate with him and I always forget. Like this dude is tough as nails. Okay. Oh, move, 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 move. You know what? I wanted to get going sooner than that, and that's what I mean. That's a mistake I can't make. Now let's see if he has enough to drive all the way from the back. That'd be pretty incredible. But gosh, that is not what I wanted to do. He's flying though. Delta Dream is flying with a furlong and a half left to go. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're going to do it. Even with a bad mess up for me. This guy is that darn good. Wow. <laughs> oh, my friends. I think we have a true future dirt champion, Hall of Famer on our hands with Delta Dream. Totally had him out of place. I got going way too late. I knew the field was going to move like that. I'm not even mad at the AI. That's just me reacting really slow for some reason. And the horse bailed me out. Like a true closer. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's like a rich strike Kentucky Derby win, except we're not at the rail and we were actually projected to win and everybody pretty much knew that. Wow. Delta Dream is the real deal, man. I don't think I've got. I don't think I've got the triple uh, crown title with any horse in this game yet. So he should be the first. Hopefully, I mean, I'll have to check his toughness to see if he can run back to back. But we don't. We don't have a chance. We we have to do it. <laughs> I mean, we don't have a choice. I mean, we do have a chance. We don't have a choice. Um, double S for Delta Dream. 74 Stam. Still don't know his staying temper and response. Don't really think it matters. Don't even know his distance yet. We've raced this guy six times already. Like, why is the game playing hide-and-go-seek? Two back-to-back -back grade one dirt wins. Toughness is 45, so he's sure as heck not going to be able to... He will not be in good shape for the Preakness. I mean, um, for the Belmont. But we got to try it, man. We have to try it. If he loses, then we know what we need to do. I want you in a grade two. It's kind of far. I want to put her in another grade one. She did better than I thought, so. Just run her at a shorter distance, maybe? If we can. It's like nothing for her, though. Like, 12 furlongs is a stretch. I really don't want to do that. I wanted to put you in a grade one, my girl, but, like, the game is trying to, like, make you run longer distances than, I, than you should. Ten furlongs in a grade three. We'll run her against the girls. Just kind of keep her on that path. For now. I mean, she's A rank. She's improving. And, like I said, we're hitting, punching above her weight every time. I'm doing well above her projected odds. So, that to me tells me she's decent. It's just, like, her stats, they, they don't look pretty. 50 stam, 70 speed, 17 feel. Like, ugh. You know? And she's almost at her peak by next year, so that's not too, um, like I said, appealing on the eyes, but she's actually doing a lot better than what that says, which is really all that matters for now. We'll, we'll think about the breeding stuff later. And uh, Solar Rider, we're 15 for 17. I've only lost two races with him. He's got 10 wins. Like, that was 16 furlongs. He has 68 stamina. I just know my horse. Like, pace ourselves. Keep our, you know, keep our rhythm explode in the end and they can't do anything about it <laughs> and does he have a long champ title yet he doesn't even have a mid champ where are the titles I don't understand 10 grade ones we don't have any normal title in this range I'll put him in the summer GP that should be an easy dub maybe mid champ there I don't know I guess we'll have to see next time around uh, young crown cup I don't actually have, or young mile cup I really don't have anybody in this race fresh light ooh Such a good horse, man. Blues Breeze already raced with you. White Stage? Nah. Best Navy? 46 damn. Yeah, right. I thought I was going to put somebody in that race, and like I put nobody in that race. That's. Golden Time, I'm just. The game is still not taking him away. I don't know what the deal is. I really don't. He is bad tempered, like not keeping him. Take him away! Like, has anybody even raced it? Okay, the, the AI haven't even raced with them. Like, the last time this horse was in a race was in December. Okay. Well, guys, this is going to do it for this episode. Hopefully you all enjoyed. We'll be back with some more Gallup Racers 2004 here very soon. Make sure I get a couple episodes out for you guys. Um, I know I've been busy, so I apologize for the lack of 
uh, yeah, just a lack of overall engagement. But like I said, I've been really busy. Like I just days are just work really. And then when I get home, I just kind of want to relax. I watch a show or I may play a game like Mass Effect, but that's really it. Like I haven't really been recording on any of my channels as of late, but I'll be trying to kind of get back into that. Just work's been busy. It's just getting to that time. Now, weather's starting to change. So, you know, just that transition. I appreciate you guys. Much love. Until next time, the Horse Racing Gamers are out. We have a rain fantastic day. I'll see you later. And goodbye.